forests foster 14.5 trillion trees, countless wildlife, recreation, and support for our ecosystem. Our foresters and landowners plan the life cycle of the state's 24.8 million acres and add $26 billion to the economy. The Sustainable Forest, a Georgia success story. First of all, let's talk about what trees and forests do for us. Uh, they give us so much. They give us materials to build our homes and schools and churches. They give us materials to make books and magazines and newspapers. They clean our air. They clean our water. And by the way, pianos, guitars, violins, cellos, uh, most all musical instruments come from the resource of wood. And we talk about sustainability when we talk about forests. Here in the state of Georgia, we have more trees than we had 100 years ago. So uh, we are doing a great job in managing our forests, and we should all be very, very proud of that. The forest life cycle is expertly managed by responsible forest managers. The life cycle begins with seeds and seedlings, and because of climate, soil conditions, and skill of the farmer, Georgia's trees grow fast and strong. We are now in the loblolly pine seed orchard at the Flint River Nursery. We collect the cones, extract the seed. That is the stock that we sow out in the nursery. Southeast United States grows trees like no other place on the planet. We have a very short rotation age. These pine trees are easy to regenerate. They're easy to plant. These trees spend a year in the nursery. They can be outplanted at, after just one growing season. We have about 850 acres here. We grow 13 to 15 million trees each year. Most of them are pine trees. It'll take at least 12 to 15 years before they reach any significant level of merchantability, but their highest value may take 25 to 35 years. Pines are the, the primary commercial species. They are the lumber producing species. They produce the pulp for paper cardboard and the printing industry. The foresters and private landowners of Georgia work together to protect and sustainably manage our abundant forest resources. And family forests tend to stay in the same family for generations. I'm Johnny Bembry. This is our family farm. It's based on a tract of land that was purchased in, back in 1807 by my great, 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 great grandfather. Stewardship plan means not just that you're looking at your land as a vehicle for producing money from trees, but that you're looking at your land as, as how it can be sustainable for forestry, sustainable for wildlife, sustainable to prevent soil and water erosion, to provide all those things that we need as a society to continue to thrive. Behind you over there, there's some seedlings that are one week old. These just to my right are nine years old. There's some behind you over there that are natural pines that are probably 40 years old. If you're able to get a, a, a continuum established so that you've got some trees that are at the stage they need to be thinned, some of the revenue from that can provide capital for the ongoing operation of your, of your reforestation. That's what's gratifying about it. It's just part of the cycle of, of keeping the earth in good order. Forest owners get advice from professional foresters and our state forestry agency, the Georgia Forestry Commission. Many landowners get forest management guidance and information by participating in a forest management certification program, such as the Sustainable Forestry Initiative or the American Tree Farm System. The first step in the pathway to sustainability is to acquire a forest management plan. A good forest management plan will allow the landowner to mimic the natural process so that we as a society can utilize goods and services that the forests provide us. The Forest Stewardship Program for the last 20 years has developed over 7,000 management plans for forest landowners in Georgia, gearing landowners and giving them the proper tools so they can manage for timber, wildlife, recreation, soil and water conservation, and aesthetic values. The process of thinning takes place early in the life cycle, when smaller trees are removed for commercial value and the remaining trees are left to grow. 
in a first inning such as we're doing today, we would typically take the stand down from 605 trees to the acre to around 240. It's basically speeding up nature. Uh, nature may take 100 years uh, to get to the best 150 trees and the small suppressed or diseased trees would fall on the ground. Here in the first inning, we're taking the products and actually utilizing it to improve the health and vigor of the remaining trees. But it is managed in an environmentally conscious way. Uh, we do things right. We're never taking more than is going back. Uh, we're never cutting more than we're planting. On this track, the trees are going to uh, primarily container board uh, packages shipping. For centuries, people saw trees only as lumber or firewood. When making lumber, they would discard the sawdust, bark, and wood scraps. Seeing potential value in the waste being created, scientists studied the structure of trees and discovered that all parts of a tree, big or small, have the potential to become valuable products. For instance, cellulose, which comes from the wood that was once wasted, is used to produce products such as clothing, shampoo, lipstick, makeup, nail polish, toothpaste, and even some medicine. School children enjoy learning about these products and the environment from which they come, where fostering the phenomenal forest comes first. She is wearing a scarf made out of Crayon is nothing but a bunch of Water. And that wood fiber that I speak of comes from a substance from a tree known as cellulose. Cellulose. Beyond recreation and wood and fiber products, what value do Georgia's working forests provide? They're giant air and water cleaning machines. Trees absorb carbon and trap lung damaging dust, ash, pollen and smoke from the air. They provide shade for people and help us conserve energy. One acre of trees produces enough oxygen for 18 people every day. Trees act as natural water filters while providing scenic beauty and homes for wildlife. Tree farmers often span generations, parents, <laughs> children, and grandchildren working together. When it's time, Georgia's professional timber harvesters sort trees by species and size and transport them to local mills. We are presently in Jones County doing a uh, second thin, making a two-way separation of pine, pulpwood, and chipping saw. We are basically a family operation. My brother, Larry, is on the job. Our daddy died about 16 years ago. He's the one that originally started the business in 1946, and about all we've ever done is work in the woods. The harvest kicks off the next forest cycle, as local sawmills process the landowner's trees. Once logs go into the sawmill, they're cut into different sizes and lengths and packaged accordingly. Lumber first runs through a kiln, which dries the wood. It's then smoothed by a planer mill and is banded by size to meet customer needs. Forestry products combined are the number one export from Georgia's ports. Georgia's tens of millions of acres of timberland available for commercial use employs approximately 120,000 Georgians in 160 wood product manufacturing facilities, 1,200 secondary manufacturers, 1,200 logging contractors, and another 200 vendors, making forestry Georgia's second largest industry. In 2013, this Habitat for Humanity build was the major project for the Georgia Sustainable Forestry Initiative Implementation Committee. I think my side looks better if I was <laughs> side. <laughs> The walls went up on Arbor Day.
coordinated by the Macon Georgia Habitat for Humanity affiliate, this new home, constructed with Georgia wood products, was dedicated to its family at a special celebration. The wood products in this home, certified to the SFI standard, will stand as a lasting testament to our abundant forest resources and the communities that brought them together for good. Congratulations on your new home. Wildlife and recreation are abundant and give Georgians an array of outdoor activities, as well as scenic beauty and pleasure. You know, the fact is, uh, everything has a lifespan. Humans have a lifespan, and it's true that uh, trees and forests have a lifespan as well. And so you want to make sure that uh, when you're adjusting your cycle and when you're making your forest plans and the management plans to manage any tract of land, uh, that you do it wisely, you do it sustainably, and that at the end of that cycle, what are you going to do? You're going to put these trees back in the ground. You're going to come and plant a new forest and let it grow into its own cycle. cycle of the sustainable forest begins again as we foster the phenomenal forest.